Hi everyone, uh, this is Emily Finch, Invasive Species Specialist for Dubois, Davies, and Martin County Soil and Water Conservation Districts. And I am here for the last time looking at our poison hemlock population. And as you can see, the plant that we had just a month ago, that, or a couple weeks ago, that was bolting, is now in full flower. And you can see just how large some of these poison hemlock plants can get. Now, poison hemlock is a biennial, which means that after it flowers and produces seed, it dies. And so at this stage, this is where a lot of folks will mistakenly uh, go and spray herbicide on it. Unfortunately, at this stage, the only effective control is to manually remove the plant. So the best way, if you only have a few plants, is to remove them manually. If you have large populations, it is probably best to mark the area for follow-up either in fall or spring of next year. Uh, there really isn't much you can do about it except removing it manually. A word of caution, uh, poison hemlock. We talk about how it is toxic if ingested. That includes any plants that are included in hay. They can still have toxic effect on your cattle. So it is a very good idea if you do have it in hay fields to monitor your fields this time of year now that the plants are tall to look for and remove it and to plan follow-up in future years. Some people when the plants are just bolting will go and they will just snip off the top flowers but as you can see as the plant matures we get a lot of these side branches that come out. The first thing we want to do is to cut the flower heads, all of them, cut all of the flowers. I like to bring a big sturdy trash bag with me to put them in. Uh, that helps ensure that as I'm taking the plants away from the site, not only am I removing any potential seed from the site, but I'm not accidentally spreading it somewhere else. Uh, if you have a large, large quantity, you might choose a different container to put it in. Once all of the flowers have been removed, uh, we do what we would have done with the rosettes. With a sharp shovel, we sever the root. As you can see, I am equipped with gloves and long sleeves again. Uh, there have been cases where people working around poison hemlock extensively uh, have gotten the toxins into their system. Uh, through a method other than oral ingestion, so it is good to be safe, uh, to monitor your health while you are working with this plant. Unlike its relatives, uh, wild parsnip and giant hogweed and cow parsnip, poison hemlock does not cause phytophotodermatitis, which is a skin rash and blistering when the sap contacts the skin and you are exposed to sunlight. That reaction does not occur with this plant, but because of its toxic properties, that's why we are taking those precautions today. As you get closer to the plant, you will notice that the stems are smooth, they are not hairy, unlike some of the other plants in the family, like Queen Anne's Lace. You can see the purple splotching that is characteristic of poison hemlock, and you'll also notice that the stems are hollow. So, those are all very distinctive for this plant. Our native relative of poison hemlock, water hemlock, can also have purple on its stems, but its leaves will not be quite as large and fern-like and it blooms later in the year exclusively in wetter conditions such as uh, ditches. You won't really find it quite as much on the edges of fields. 